This is a collaboration of Art Speak Now with the Florida International University Radcliffe Art and Design Incubator celebrating going into almost its sixth year of, you know, entrepreneurship and, and really building that next generation of, of leaders across every industry. We just don't take art and design students. We take um, students from the entire university. So let's kick it off, Ray, because I know it's been a while and we have, um, we have a, an American photographer um, to unveil today um, as part of Art Speak. We're talking about Heidi, is that my saying it right, Heidi? Right. Heidi Pastor Harf, an American photographer who spent 18 years abroad and currently resides in, in New York. Let's talk about why she's important in, in this issue. So um, <clears throat> a little known story is that uh, I'm good friends with her stepmother mm -hmm. and she contacted me and she said, my stepdaughter is having an exhibition of her photographs at the uh, Jewish Museum of Florida, FIU, which is mm -hmm. in Miami Beach. And um, so I went down to see the photographs and it turned out they were photographs that had been published in the Washington Post magazine, Sunday magazine. Heidi grew up in uh, the Hamptons <clears throat> on Long Island and met them uh, when she was in college studying photography. She met the man who became her husband. And eventually he was from Cali, Colombia. And eventually they moved first to Venezuela and then that uh, became a political, politically difficult place to be living. And so they moved to Cali, which is also not such an easy place to live. It's got all kinds of drug wars and all kinds of issues, political issues and whatnot. But she uh, lived there for 17 years and continued doing pho photography. She would go out um, <clears throat> on the streets and try to do street photography. And everybody warned her that people would kidnap her, that they would <laughs> murder her for her phone, that she should put black tape over her camera uh, uh, logos so that people would know she had an expensive camera. And uh, she even had, um, because of the community she lived in, she had a both a, uh, uh, a chauffeur to take to kind of shadow her as she walked the streets and, 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 a, and security that followed her. So she was doing that. She became, uh, she grew up uh, in a fairly Orthodox Jewish community in, in the Hamptons. And she was part of a, pretty small Jewish community in Cali, which was no more than 400 people. And it had been a more vibrant community, but over the years, people left. <clears throat> and she tells the story about the different denominations of people that practiced there in the synagogues that they had, but it began dwindling, the synagogues began closing. And at some point, she got tipped off that there were a, 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 was a group of evangelical Christians that were gonna to convert to Judaism and do a mass conversion. And when she went to see what that was all about, she discovered that they were indigenous people that were doing it. And they had mixed reasons for doing it. To some extent, they wanted to convert to Judaism so they could immigrate to Israel and get out of Colombia. And uh, so that was one motivation, but they weren't just converting to Judaism, they were converting to Orthodox Judaism. So they were doing a lot of the practices uh, that I would say only a small percentage of Jews do in the United States. Um, and so she was documenting that photographically and she had met in her community, which is a small community, a guy named Ezra Axelrod, who is both a musician, he composes uh, music both for advertising and for uh, movie tracks, soundtracks, but he also studied filmmaking. And he 
grew up in the mountains of Oregon, then went to Middlebury College in Vermont, then moved to London um, for a while, and then uh, married uh, someone who's from Cali, and he moved to Cali, and that's how they were part of the same community. And when he saw the photographs, he said, why don't we make a film about this community? And so they are in the process, they're in post-production now, of uh, making a film about the indigenous people that are converting to Judaism. So always fascinating to hear about, you know, some of the contributions um, that some of these people that are featured in these issues make. Anything else that you want to add about her that's important before we wrap up? Well, yeah, I guess I should say, because she says it in our interview, that she got divorced and she moved back to Brooklyn now. So she's yeah. living in Brooklyn. Uh, Ezra Axelrod's still living in, in Cali. And he gives a very vivid description of both the beauty and the uh, how much it means for him to be living there. He's he's fluent in Spanish, and and he says that's really a necessity. There aren't many people who speak English uh, around him, and um, and uh, he seems to be staying there for the foreseeable future. And he's both involved, uh, very involved politically, to do things like. Uh, make uh, cocoa leaves, uh, leave the cocoa trade uh, uh, legal so that it, it might reduce the amount of uh, 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 drug uh, gangs and, and violence. And, uh, and he's trying to make movies there and revive the, uh, the film community down there. Well, Ray Elman, it's always good to connect and talk about you know, some of these art speak personalities. Um, we look forward to another session soon. Okay, it's great to see you, Maggie, and I can't wait till I see you again. <laughs> Thank you, Ray, likewise. <laughs>